And to show you exactly what's going on here, I have a little scene. I've taken the images to try to animate them so you can see what's happening, okay? So here's a very um, sort of ugly scene. It's sort of color-coded by uh, certain regions. That doesn't really matter. What matters is the camera now is going to move to the right, all right? It's a posterized color scene so you, so you can see these things stand up a little better, right? So that's image one, that's image two, that's image three, that's image four. So going backwards, so the camera's moving to the right, and of course, the, it's not a Rubik's Cube, whatever kind of horrible, evil, diabolical puzzle that is, is moving to the left faster because it's closer. So if I were to take all those images and build a cube of them, this is that same cube, okay? So here we have X and Y, and we stack them in time this way. And here's just the top of them. And I'm just going to take a slice, one of the slices through there, and that looks like that. So now it's at a fixed Y value. This is X, and this is time. And here are my streaks again, okay? And notice that some of these streaks, okay, move at different slopes. Those slopes correspond to the depth of the scene. And what's kind of cool about this is it's real easy to find these kinds of lines, okay? And you can find lines that intersect that, that aren't parallel to the other lines. And so you can use that to pull out the object. All right, and this is called epi-image epi analysis. And you can use that in some other ways also. So I think one of the coolest ones I ever saw was done by uh, Ted Adelson, the same Adelson we spoke about before, uh, again, now almost 20 years ago. They had a scene where you had people just walking past you. Okay? And imagine you've now got a volume of video. Okay, and you stack that up. And now I'm just going to show you some chunks taken from sort of the top, the, the head area, and then by, down by the feet. At the area that is really at the very top here, nothing changes in the camera. So as time goes this way, the pixels stay constant. Okay? But at the slice where their heads are, okay, you see these lines there, the, these regions here? That's the movement of their heads through space-time. That's what this volume is. It's space-time, right? And so each one of these diagonal lines is the movement of their heads. And these straight lines here, what are those? Those are just the background, just like up here. Though when things don't move, right? and the camera's moving, this, the, the pixel value in time stays the same, so it's just a straight ray in space-time. But if they're moving, then you see them moving across in time. Now, the really cool thing is what happens if you look at their feet, right? So if I look down at this level, okay, here's what the space-time image looks like. And you see this braided pattern? That braided pattern is the movement of their feet in time. In fact, they even published a paper, here's just some images taken of it, uh, showing the same thing, the slice through the head and the slice through the, the feet. And what they were able to show, and here it's just sort of lined up, is that you could actually recognize who the person was with a small sample set by just tracking that braid. All right? So look, it's not how you would do gait recognition in a really good discriminative way and things like that, but it's an example of showing you the data structures that you can get from processing video.